Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at the Pascal's Triangle. Um, hopefully you've looked at some of the other videos that I've, I've attached uh, from, from YouTube, which gives you a quick introduction of Pascal's Triangle. It's it's not going to be a very long um, lesson because it's uh, the pattern is, is quite a simple pattern. Um, just a th few things that I, I want to sort of uh, point out. Hopefully you've already recognized um, a few things about the patterns and, and how to create the actual triangle or the pattern. Um, hopefully you've realized if you can see on the outsides, we always start on the outside of our triangle with those ones. Okay, and then from those ones, we can then create the other numbers. So let's have a look how we've got how this is created. So we've got one. The next two are, are where we extend our pattern from. We are always adding the top two numbers to make that third number or the number below. Okay, so you can see there I've done one plus one in order to create two. For the next one, if you know if I want to make this number here on we know it's gonna be three, one plus two is three. Likewise two plus one makes three. Okay? Can you start to see the sort of pattern that is forming? Likewise 1 plus 3 makes 4, 3 plus 1 makes 4, and then the 3 plus 3 makes 6. Okay, but again, those outside numbers will always begin from 1. There are a few other important factors that I'll, I want to talk about. Now, we said that, you know, we can always see the outside numbers there are always going to be 1. Okay, always. But there are some other number patterns that, that can be seen here. Maybe not as clearly as this one because I, I haven't extended this triangle to be to be very big. Um, but we're still going to look at some of the main patterns that occur here. So not only do we have the ones on the outside, but you might start to see some other patterns. For example, one, two, three, four. What do you reckon the next number's going to be? Five. Then six, then seven, then eight. Okay, does it happen on the other side? Let's have a look. One and two and three and four. And five and six and seven and eight. So we've got a couple of other patterns that occur here also. Now, although this doesn't seem much of a pattern at the moment because I haven't got a very big triangle again, you might recognize a couple of other numbers. For example, 1 and 3 and 6. The other side, 1 and 3 and 6. Now you might think, well, what's 1, 3 and 6? Well, if we have a look at this, 1 three and six. Well first of all what they got by two three. So what do you reckon that one's gonna be? That's two, that's three, might go up by four, make it ten. You might recognise the one, three, six, ten combination. And that's what we actually call the triangular numbers. One, then the three, and then we have the six, and then we're gonna have the 10. What do you reckon the next one might be? Did you say 15? Excellent, because we're going to add a number 5 and that makes 15. You can see how they kind of make little triangles. So, not only does a Pascal's triangle have, you know, the first pattern of adding the top two to make the bottom number, okay, but it also has, you know, the in row patterns that we spoke about. So the one, two, three, four. It also has some triangular patterns as we spoke about as well. One, three, six, ten. So lots of other stuff. And and you will find um, as years go on, you will discover other patterns and other types of um, sort of numbers that are, are occurring. But at the moment, the main fact that we want to look at is being able sorry, to uh, to just create into um, I guess complete the Pascal's triangle. So let's have a look. Let's con let's complete this one. So we know that we have ones all on the outsides there. Okay? That always happens. It always has one. Okay, so let's have a look. We already got the first one because one one and nothing makes one. Okay? So one plus one makes two. Two plus one makes three. Two plus one makes three. And we've got 1 plus 3 makes 4, 
3 plus 3 makes 6, 3 plus 1 makes 4. Now I'm just going to stop there because you might also notice what else is happening. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Huh, what do you notice about those numbers? Well hopefully you realised that those numbers are kind of like mirrors. They're back to front, okay? So one four six four one one four six four one. Can you remember, or do you know, what the name of those type of numbers are? Hopefully, you may have said this: a palindrome. Now, you've heard of palindrome words, probably like mum, dad, okay, or maybe even names: Anna, Anna. Okay, where they can be read back to front. Well, it works the same for numbers. So actually, not only does this contain, you know, the patterns of the um, the bottom number equals top two numbers, or we have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or even the triangular numbers of one, three, six, ten, fifteen, twenty-one. But we also have palindrome numbers. So if you can figure out what the first couple of numbers are, like 1, 5, 10, we know it's going to be 10, 5, 1. Okay, we know this is going to be 20, because 10 and 10 makes 20. So 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. Back to front. 15 and 20 makes 35. So again, we've got 35, then 21, and then 7. But again, so there's lots of different ways that you can find out how to create these numbers. Okay, so again, Pascal's triangle is really famous because you can already see how many different types of patterns occur in that triangle. Okay, look, I hope you found this interesting and hopefully it made a bit of sense. Um, let me know if you need some more help with this. But, you know, as I said, all it really is for you guys at the moment is being able to try to... Um, I guess um, being able to create the Pascal's triangle, okay, by hand, and then once you've been able to do that, to recognise some of the patterns of different types of numbers that occur. Have a great day, guys.